have heard from. Could yet turn out to be the perfect fixture this to mark such a shattering event. Kenny Morgan's in the middle of the picture there, the last man to be found on the plane. Somewhere near approaching nine o'clock at night when two journalists went back on board to find pictures they'd taken of the game. Jimmy Murphy's son, to our right as we look at that. Jim was away managing Wales in that week, so didn't travel. Sandy Busby there, so Matt's son. So that's our first match this afternoon. It's Old Trafford where we're going now. Eventually, we will hear from Alan Smith, who's sitting alongside our commentator today, Martin Tyler. Thank you, Richard. In a week in which the Premier League has said it wants to spread its wings, poignant memories here of the dreadful cost to footballing pioneers of the past. This is a time of tribute at Old Trafford culminating in this pre-match commemoration of those Busby babes who never grew old. The young stars of the 1950s drew millions to follow Manchester United and the demise of some in such terrible circumstances brought a tide of sympathy which turned a football club into an institution. Both teams wearing special kit which is a homage to 1958. Manchester United shirts numbered from 1 to 11. Before the teams emerge, a verse of the Flowers of Manchester tribute song, which was written very shortly after that dreadful disaster. Things are to be led out by a lone piper, Terry Carr. Manchester United lost an entire 11, eight players, two members of the coaching staff and the club secretary. And it shouldn't be forgotten at this time that Two other players, Johnny Berry and Jackie Blanchflower, survived but never kicked a ball again. Twelve others perished in the snow in Munich 50 years ago last Wednesday, and they have not been forgotten at this time of remembrance, particularly Frank Swift, then a member of the press corps, previously an outstanding goalkeeper from Manchester City in England. Manchester United reserves and youth team players thanking the two teams which remind us that it was a Manchester tragedy not just a disaster for United the support of Manchester City at that terrible time has never been forgotten here it is red against blue to come in a few minutes but they are together in mind and spirit now Two teams heading for the centre circle, where there will be a laying of wreaths by the two managers. Kenny Morgans, the Welsh winger, was only 18 at the time of the disaster and was the last person pulled from the plane.
As you can see, the teams of mascots are now in position. For the next few moments, we really are and must be seen as a city that is united. We would now like to ask Sir Alex Ferguson and Sven Norrin Eriksson to place their cutlery side by side on the centre spot. Sir Alex Ferguson and Sven Joran Eriksson both with very clear memories of the pain felt around the world in February 1958 and now the chance for Manchester to show that it is a city united and a period of silence for those who landed in Munich but never reached home As we now go into our minutes of silent tribute to many of the 23 people who lost their lives in the Munich air crash. in goal for Manchester United. Patrice Everett is banned today, so it's John O'Shea at left back. In midfield, there's a place for Nani. Ronaldo could be switched up front, with Wayne Rooney also suspended today. A lot of attacking flexibility for Sir Alex Ferguson, as usual. Owen Hargreaves amongst the substitutes, as he was for England in midweek. Alan Smith. They are a slightly different shape for United today, but certainly not one that they are unfamiliar with. Ryan Giggs has supported a lone striker plenty of times in his career, but you wouldn't be at all surprised if he did share those duties with Ronaldo, who likes to drift inside and get involved anyway. No, no, well, he's also capable of swapping positions with Giggs. It all adds up to a very fluid and dangerous lineup that's playing with heaps of confidence just now. They're not just conceding many goals. In Ronaldo, of course, they have someone in unstoppable form. Joe Hart plays his first derby in City's goal. Choluka is one of the two City players banned, so Nader Manuaha plays at right back. Richard Dunn is under the weather, but he does start the game. Elano has also reached the five yellow cards, so Stephen Ireland moves into a more central area with Darius Vassell returning on the right. And there's a debut on derby day for Benjani, whose move from Portsmouth has been finally ratified. And it could also be the same for Felipe Caicedo, the Ecuadorian who has just joined for £5.2 million from Basel in Switzerland. Sven Johan Eriksson goes with his five-man midfield. I think two reasons for that. City are playing the champions today, so he's bound to be hard. And with Wayne Rooney suspended, I think Sven would have suspected United using somebody in the hole, so he doesn't want to get outnumbered in that area. But you look at the side and you look at the old heads, I think. The ones who have been here before know what it's all about. And for City to get something today, I think the likes of Richard Dunn, Didi Hammond in that holding role, they'll simply have to play 